Hey folks, I hope everyone's doing well. I'm glad the heat wave is coming to an end finally, thankfully. Um, still can't teach until the recent wildfire that started on Sunday is under control. So I've been trying to catch up on a lot of errands and things on that I've had on uh, my back burner. Uh, one of those is just to post a follow-up to a health update. I know I posted that I'm trying to probably downsize a lot of my classes. Um, I've been diagnosed as pre-diabetic and cholesterol is a little bit on the high side. You know, these are kind of like my doctors telling me if I don't make changes now to my diet, exercise, and also better work-life balance, <clears throat> I don't want to continue that trajectory, right? And so the, the other thing I haven't disclosed is I uh, had a colonoscopy done. Well, I actually posted stories about it. I had a colonoscopy done a few weeks ago, but I didn't want to post anything else until I got the results. And so I'm going to be sharing some, you know, private uh, medical issues, conditions I've been experiencing. Kind of embarrassing, <clears throat> but I think it's important to talk about it to kind of raise awareness about um, your colon, your rectum. We all have them, right? And uh, colorectal uh, cancer is actually a, a pretty serious topic. Um, and so I thought I'd just use my own experience as an example, right? So uh, apologies in advance if it's, if it's uh, uh, TMI, too much information for you, okay? But previous Thanksgiving, um, this last Thanksgiving, I noticed like blood every time I went number two in the bathroom, right? Blood in my stool. Never happened in my life, I don't think. Okay, like I'm talking a lot of blood. And I was kind of freaked out. It happened, you know, a few days in a row. No pain. There's no other symptoms. I mean, I, I feel perfectly healthy. It was just, wow, oh, there's... Why is the toilet bowl red, right? Kind of just really puzzled. And then it, it went away, so I kind of like, okay, maybe it was just something minor, you know, hemorrhoid, I don't know, okay? But then it came back during the holidays, I think December-ish, January. Came back, go away, come back. So it's kind of like this recurring weird phenomenon that's I, I just, I've never had until then. So I talked to my doctor about it, and in February, he, uh, he uh, had an at-home kit sent to me where you can, you know, take a stool sample at home uh, in the comfort of your own home and then ship that stool sample to a laboratory to have them check it out. It's kind of like a pre-screening, okay? Um, and the results came back abnormal. So that means that they found some abnormal results in that stool sample in February. And then I had my physical in May, my annual checkup, which is, you know, along with the pre-diabetic and uh, cholesterol, we talked about those abnormal results in May. And he's like, well, then you better, uh, you know, that's the pre-screening to determine how soon or urgent you need a colonoscopy. And because it's abnormal, yeah, I need to get one. So that was May. And, you know, um, sometimes it takes a while to find an opening for you know, the doctor to schedule the colonoscopy. So I finally had one done, um, August, okay? I just got the results back yesterday. Uh, Dr. Zaramani, during the procedure in August, uh, he found a one inch polyp. Okay, we're talking like huge, okay? Inside me, inside my colon. And, you know, take it out, um, send it to the lab, and I was freaking out because I'm like, there's a one inch polyp inside of me? Like, how did I not notice this, right? Of course, how would you, okay? Um, and I started reading and you know, by the time it gets to something that size, it could be, it could be colon cancer, it could be malignant, right? But I try not to think about it until, you know, why, why stress over something I can't control, right? Let's wait for the lab results. Um, and so yesterday he called with the results. And he himself told me, hey, listen, you know, we've, this one inch polyp, the doctor says he was really worried because when it gets to that size, oftentimes it is, it is uh, cancerous, okay? Thankfully, folks, um, the lab, the biopsy shows that it's not malignant, it's benign, but the doctor did say that for it to get to that size, if I had waited another year or two before I got a colonoscopy, it could have easily um, turned malignant and cancerous. It could have easily been colon cancer, 
the longer I waited, right? So that was, that was a huge wake-up call for me, folks, yesterday, okay? Because, I mean, I'm 54. They advise, you know, as we get older, we should start thinking about getting colonoscopy around our 40s, 45, something like that. So I, I know I've been putting it off. Um, it's just not the most pleasant thing to, to want to think about scheduling. <laughs> you know, someone deeply examining your colon. And the only reason why I finally got one was because some it got to a point where some obvious symptom happened, you know, blood exiting my, my body in that way for me to take it serious, right? But if what if that didn't happen and I just kept on waiting? Could easily just wait until it turned to, you know, advanced age uh, colon cancer, right? So it's a, it's a wake-up call for me. Uh, I feel like I've dodged a bullet right here, and I feel like, you know what? I should probably share this with folks out there so they don't find themselves in the same position I did, and maybe folks should be uh, more proactive than I am, right? So that's, that's kind of like I'm, how I'm doing this video, okay? And so I actually uh, Googled um, this report, released this January, American Cancer Society released their latest insights into colorectal cancer and their estimates for 2024. And it's, it's very eye-opening, folks. Okay? So, you know, I didn't, I didn't know this and so I started reading it, but colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of all cancer-related deaths in, in this country. And they're estimating 53,000, over 53,000 deaths due to colorectal cancer this year. Okay? It is now the leading cause of cancer death in men uh, under 50. We're going to talk about under 50, folks. Okay, And it's also the second leading cause of death in women in the same age group. And um, young people are often diagnosed with more advanced uh, cancer stages because there's a delay in detection or getting checked out. Okay, And if you're talking about probability, this report says that a man faces a 1 in 23 chance of developing colorectal cancer. That is huge. And very similar, women's odds are 1 in 25. Okay? So, I mean, you know, I'm a gun instructor. You know, I know the form and, and, and the subject matter should be about guns all the time on my platform. And it's not. It's not. Because I, I like to talk about things that are actually more realistic that can happen to us, right? I, I think a 1 in, uh, more than 1 in 20 chance of something, of getting colorectal cancer, it's way more likely than us being involved in a gunfight or being assaulted or, or whatnot, right? So I think it's it's good to talk about, okay? And listen, I don't have a lot of the, you know, contributing fact, uh, lifestyle factors. Um, I'm not obese. Um, I don't smoke. Um, I don't eat a whole, huge amount of uh, red or processed meat, okay? Um, but if, you know, I don't, I don't, what else do I, do I not do? I don't really eat junk food or fast food or chips. I mean, okay, sometimes chips, okay? Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not typically, I don't consider myself extremely unhealthy, right? I don't have a whole lot of bad habits. You know, I'm like everyone else. I have my moments where, you know, it's okay to have our cheat days and stuff and, and probably too many carb, carbs the last four years of when I talked about contributing to um, the pre-diabetic. But folks, you know, for someone that's, trying to take care of myself reasonably. I mean, if, if I can end up in this situation with a huge polyp, I mean, think, think about the average person out there too, right? So I think it's good to talk about. Um, and you know, there's health disparities. We know about this, okay? And they talk about it. American Health Society acknowledges that because of racial discrimination and systemic inequalities in our health care, it, it uh, is an obstacle to getting timely diagnoses for a lot of folks particularly in minority communities. For example, black folks in America, 15% more likely to develop colorectal cancer and 35% more likely to die from it than their white counterparts. Indigenous folks in Alaska have the highest colorectal cancer incidence and mortality rates globally. That's shocking. And they mention LGBTQ plus folks the queer community, there's a health disparity there in detection because of this presumption of care gap where, you know, in the queer community, there's, there's a fear that a doctor will refuse care and uh, because of the perception of someone's gender or orientation. So there's a whole bunch of obstacles and disparities 
to folks in, in marginalized communities even getting checked up early enough to even uh, be screened for this, right? And don't just think this affects, you know, older folks like myself, folks. I mean, you young folks, um, they, they just re, uh, reported this um, just like a couple of days ago, September 6th right here, University of Miami researchers. They're looking into the recent spike of colon cancer in young adults. We're talking about folks. Look at this. American Cancer Society says the colon cancer rates in younger adults, and we're talking folks from 20 to 50, okay, has nearly doubled in the past three decades, okay? And when these younger patients find out, the cancer is usually already advanced to the point where they're more likely to die because they're not getting early detection, right? It's not like a big uh, urgent concern for young folks to get colorectal screening, right? But this trend is increasing. And so um, these doctors at University of Miami, they have, they, they seem to think that what's happening in the, in the past decades up to now is processed foods. There may be um, something, some chemicals, um, emulsifiers that give that creamy texture in a lot of food, even what we consider healthy food like non-fat yogurt, that is messing up with our gut bacteria and causing inflammation, right? And so it might be the gut bacteria and processed foods. Excuse me, I've had uh, allergies with this heat wave. But yeah, even younger folks, there is a spike in colon cancer among young folks. So it, it's across the board, folks, okay? So that's why I'm making this video, okay? It's not just me, all right? And so I just wanted to demystify and maybe talk about it. And, you know, for something I put, oh, I put off for so long, it was actually pretty, it was painless, the procedure, all right? I want to demystify it. Okay, to get a colonoscopy, um, they send you home this, this solution, right? You make this gallon solution in this jug, okay? And um, you're supposed to start fasting, no food, uh, the morning before your procedure. Okay, you start drinking this solution um, the evening before, and it literally just purges, purges your colon, okay? You're gonna be going to the bathroom a lot, okay? So the night before my procedure, I couldn't go to a, a concert. I wanted to go to this concert. Nope, I had to stay home, okay? Be near the toilet, okay? And then the night before, stop drinking any water, okay? Just drink that solution. That's purging your colon, okay? The first time I, I did this, I messed up. I, I was thirsty in the morning before my procedure. I drank water. Come to find out, that's a huge mistake, so they rescheduled it because they didn't want any chance of me waking up during the procedure, right? Having water uh, in your system kind of reducing the effects of the, um, the the chemical they're putting in your veins to put you to sleep, okay? So I rescheduled it. So definitely don't make my mistake. Drink no water since the night before. Just a solution, okay? And pretty soon, the morning before your procedure, what's coming out, purging out, is just clear liquid, okay? Cleanse your system, okay? So the doctor has a nice, clean view of everything inside, okay? Get there, and it's super efficient, right? They, you go in, they put an IV in here, okay? You're in, they start pumping the chemical that puts you to sleep, and literally, it will, it just knocked me out, okay? I was already waking up. Like, I knocked out, woke up, thought, what's going on? It was, procedure was already done. I didn't feel anything. There was no discomfort at all, okay? And, and then you go about your day. I mean, you're in and out in like two, three hours. That's how fast and efficient they are, right? So for folks that are kind of squeamish about getting colonoscopy, there's no reason to. Okay, it's a very straightforward procedure. Just follow the directions. Uh, that the, the hardest thing is you having to follow the directions the night before and doing all the stuff you're supposed to do on your end to just flush everything out your colon. Okay, on their end, easy. You don't feel anything. Okay, and it's a quick recovery. Um, my friend had to come. She was nice enough to drive out and, and drive me home because you're still a little bit groggy afterwards. And that's that's it, folks. That's it. And so, you know, I, I am 54, I'm not getting any younger. I, I am working towards help, my better health. I'm trying to get better work-life balance, as many of us are hoping to. Um, I've had to change many careers. That's like my fourth small business. I've, I've started from the ground up from scratch. And I hope it's my last one. I hope to be continue teaching for many years to come. But if I'm in it for the, my longevity, 
I, I hope this is what I'm going to be doing until the day I retire. And to make that possible, well, I need to kind of reduce the stress on myself, both mentally and physically. And that means that, yeah, I'm cutting back on my classes. I'm not, I'm not going to teach large groups because it's a big strain on myself. I'm not going to expand on my business with more instructors because um, I'm just going to keep it myself, what's manageable for myself. And that just means I won't be as available to as many people. And it is what it is because at the end of the day, I have to prioritize my own health, right? We have to take care of ourselves before we take care of others, right? And so, yeah, just appreciate you lending an ear if this was interesting for you. If, if you learned something from it, great. If not, no biggie, okay? If you've been following my page, you know I have no filter, okay? I've, if, if I haven't learned to speak my mind un unapologetically by this age, then what... what what, what am I doing, right? So I'm always going to be real. I'm always going to share stuff that I think is important. It does not always have to be gun-related, okay? Because we're all human, folks, okay? And, right, I, I know people got guns out there. You're, you're freaking out about a lot of things, a lot of things that give you anxiety and pause, but your health, something that you can take direct effect on, right, have some control over and be proactive about is your health, okay? Health is wealth, right? There's no amount of money that can replace your health once you let it slide to a certain point of no return. So I kind of saw that for myself yesterday with what the doctor told me. And so, you know, I am going to take better care of myself. Um, shout out to People's Yoga. I've been going to, uh, yesterday or the day before. It's kind of like my two-month anniversary. I've been going every day if I can. And it's been a huge boost for my energy, my self-confidence, learning stuff, um, just feeling good about myself, right? So, you know, whatever you need to do to... Take better care of yourself and feel good about yourself. I hope you're doing that too, okay? Whether it's mentally and physically, it's, it's all important, okay? And with that, thanks for listening, folks, okay? And I hope to see you in one of my classes once we can resume after this uh, latest wildfire. Okay, take care, folks.